and today I'm going to detail how a long-standing deficiency of the critical carbohydrate digesting enzyme amylase contributes to the excessive amyloid plaque deposition and consequential nerve and memory degradation of Alzheimer's. Amylase is produced primarily in both the pancreas and salivary glands, and so with its presence in saliva, you should see right here that amylase is one of the very first enzymes that comes in contact with the food we eat. Amylase is also found in the intestines, liver, lungs, and muscles, and in the brain, we find amylase in astrocytes, parasites, and most critically, neurons. Neuronal amylase is located in the synaptic structures, which are clearly visible in people without dementia, but totally absent in those with Alzheimer's. So this is an easy indication of the role that amylase deficiency plays in the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia, and its pathological changes often begin several years before symptoms appear. And one of the earliest changes, other than the accumulation of amyloid plaque and neurofibrillary tangles, is severely reduced glucose metabolism in the brain. Brain glucose metabolism is dependent on a steady supply of glucose from the periphery, but as a backup mechanism, brain cells store and use glycogen, the storage form of glucose, which is produced by the metabolic enzyme glycogen synthase. Glycogen production occurs primarily in brain astrocytes and is then degraded when energy is required. And here is where amylase is needed because amylase contributes heavily to glycogen degradation, thus releasing glucose as an immediate energy source for brain cells, a process specifically known as glycogenolysis. So it shouldn't be surprising that people with Alzheimer's who have accumulations of both amyloid beta and tau neurofibrillary tangles also have severely reduced levels of amylase in the brain. Amyloid beta plaque accumulation also severely reduces brain cell levels of glycogen, and this is particularly damaging to both short and long-term memory because neuronal glycogen is ordinarily critical for maintaining the longevity of nerve impulses along pathways which have been used previously. Alzheimer's is sometimes informally referred to as type 3 diabetes, and this is primarily because both Alzheimer's and type 2 diabetes are distinguished by a disastrous brain enzyme called acetylcholine esterase, which, accordingly, breaks down acetylcholine, the essential neurotransmitter so critical for memory, learning, and attention. So it shouldn't surprise you that type 2 diabetes is also accelerated by severely low levels of amylase, among other enzymes. Enzyme deficiencies are quite common, and they are often one primary factor behind specific food cravings and related digestive difficulties, and an amylase deficiency is actually the most common enzyme deficiency. When you have an amylase deficiency, this impairs your digestion of both simple and complex carbs, which often manifests as headaches, fatigue, brain fog, irritability, seasonal allergies, and most especially, sugar cravings. While you'll find amylase in all digestive enzyme formulas, look for one with a high amount of amylase, something like 20,000 units or more per serving, and try to take this at the beginning of every major meal. You can also use amylase therapeutically, and this means taking amylase on an empty stomach about two hours after a meal or one hour before. You will sometimes see therapeutic amylase offered as a solution for seasonal airborne allergies because, in addition to thoroughly digesting sugar and carbs, amylase also balances histamine levels, and a therapeutic amount of amylase would be at least 30,000 units per serving, if not more. Remember that enzymes are not measured in milligrams, but rather units of potency. And for amylase, those units are dexaturnizing units, which is often abbreviated just as DU. You can always combine enzymes for even stronger support. And if you're using amylase therapeutically, then for additional defense against Alzheimer's, try pairing your therapeutic amylase with the silkworm enzyme serapeptase because serapeptase is functionally similar to our alpha-secretase enzymes that normally digest the amyloid precursor protein. Also, the clot-forming protein fibrin, which serapeptase is well known for degrading, is definitely a component of amyloid plaque. So in this way, regular proteolytic use of serapeptase can break down existing amyloid plaque. I've detailed for you before how minerals enhance the activity of enzymes, even that of supplemental enzymes. And for amylase, these enhancing minerals are specifically magnesium, potassium, and manganese. 
So try also to incorporate these into your daily diet, while, if possible, reducing your calcium intake. Because excessive calcium, which is very common today, is known for sharply diminishing amylase activity. I hope this gives you a new way to look at the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's, and also the lifelong importance of maintaining adequate levels of amylase, even if you think you already eat a healthy, low-inflammatory diet. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzymental. Stay healthy.